Okay, so here they're saying that you have a mixture of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, which has a density of 1.7 gram per liter at STP, standard temperature and pressure, which means the temperature is going to be 0 degrees Celsius, so 273 Kelvin, and the pressure is going to be 1 atm, right? That's what we have. Uh, the mole fraction of carbon monoxide is going to be what, right? So you have options given to you. So let's take a look what's happening here. Let's fill in the data given first. Right, so what do we have? We have density of the mixture as 1.7 gram per liter. Okay, 1.7 gram per liter is the density given to us. Pressure, STP conditions have been mentioned, which means the pressure is going to be 1 atm. Temperature, temperature is um, uh, 273 Kelvin, right? We need to standardize this. So instead of 1.7 gram per liter, I would advise you to write it as 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 3 kg per liter. Okay, so 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 3 kg per liter. Basically, if you write it like this, then you can forget about the units. Okay, so that is what we have. Now, let's see. So, see, basically, they are trying to give us idle gas law in terms of density. So, we know PV is equal to NRT. We can write N, that is the number of moles, as a given mass divided by molar mass. Correct? So, then, when we write it like this, okay, so we can say that, uh, mass upon volume is density, right? So density is here and then we send the molar mass to the other side. So pressure into molar mass is equal to density multiplied by R multiplied by T. Okay, why do we care about this? Because here density is something that is given to us. So we need to convert it to in terms of molar mass. Okay, so then the equation becomes something like this. So you write uh, molar mass of the mixture will now become density of the mixture into R into T, right, R and T standard values, I mean T is given to you as 273 Kelvin, R will be your standard value in the given units, and then we have pressure of the mixture, pressure is given to you as 1 atm. So when you calculate, you get the molar mass of the mixture as 38.08, okay, so yes, this is in grams, however, okay, this is in grams. Okay, molar mass of the mixture, the mixture contains carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, right, so here, take a look at it. They have, again, yet again, they've simplified it for us very much. So you have molar mass of mixture is equal to M1X1 plus M M2 into 1 minus X2. Why have we been able to write this? Because we know that mole fraction of 1 plus mole fraction of 2 is going to be equal to 1. Correct? Right. So if I say that 1 is carbon monoxide, then we can convert everything to in terms of carbon monoxide. So now this equation becomes molar mass of mixture is equal to molar mass of carbon monoxide into mole fraction of carbon monoxide plus molar mass of carbon dioxide into 1 minus mole fraction of carbon monoxide, right? Mole fraction of carbon monoxide is what we need to find and plug in the values we know that uh, mole fraction of the mixture, uh, sorry, molar mass of the mixture is 38.08 is equal to molar mass of carbon monoxide is 28 multiplied by I'll call it XCO plus carbon dioxide is going to be 44 into 1 minus XCO. Simplify this. What do you get? You will get molar mass, uh, sorry, mole fraction of carbon monoxide. This is carbon monoxide will come out to be 0.37, right? Simplify. It's not a very tough calculation at all. Okay. So 0.37 is the mole fraction of carbon monoxide. That's what the question was asking. Mole fraction of carbon monoxide, right? So option A 0.37 is going to be the right answer to this question. Okay, so here they're saying the gaseous products expected by the reaction of sodium borohydride and boron trifluoride under anhydrous conditions at high temperature is or are going to be what? Okay, so take a look at this. What is happening here is that basically we are talking about the preparation of diborane, right? So see, you have uh, boron trifluoride and you have sodium borohydride reacting in the presence of ether, right? You need to understand that we need uh, an organic solvent here. We cannot use water, okay? Otherwise, it will undergo hydrolysis. So what do we get? We have diborane here, right? Which is gaseous okay this is going to be gaseous and then of course we have NABF4 okay so diborane B2H6 is going to be the gaseous product that is formed okay at high temperature high temperature as in 450 Kelvin so you have to heat it okay so B2H6 is here an option C so option C B2H6 diborane is going to be the right answer to this question Okay, another question on diborane, they're asking you uh, how many electrons are involved in the formation of the BHB bond in 
B two H six. So we have the bridge bond, right? We have the bridge bond uh, in B two H six in diborane. They are asking you how many electrons are involved in the formation of the bridge bond. Okay. So take a look. We have the structure of diborane here, and we know that what is this? This is your boron. This is the boron. This is the bridging hydrogen. This is the bridging hydrogen. Right? These are your terminal hydrogens. And the terminal bonds are normal bonds. They are two center two electron bonds. Why am I saying two center two electron bonds? Because that is exactly where the bridge bonds are different, right? I'm just highlighting one of the bridge bonds because here in the bridge bond you have a three center, right? You have boron, hydrogen, and boron. You have three centers, but only two electrons. Okay, you have a three center two electron bond. Okay, so what did we hear? Three center two electron bond, which means two electrons are involved in the bond formation. in the case of a bridge bond right so yes answer is going to be two electrons and option a two electrons becomes the right answer to this question all right so here they are asking you that in solid state boric acid has which type of interaction between its layers okay so i hope you remember that in solid state boric acid exists in layers right here take a look at it so you have layers which are held together by hydrogen bonds okay so you see these yellow dotted lines right so uh, they are hydrogen bonds okay so hydrogen bond is what holds the layers together in solid boric acid so each boron atom is sp2 hybridized and oh that's not visible give me a minute okay so each boron atom is sp2 hybridized and it contains bo3 3 minus units which are held together by hydrogen bonds okay so yes this is what happens hydrogen bonds is going to be the right answer so option a hydrogen bonding right that is the right answer to this question Okay, so here they've given you a reaction which is at equilibrium. So you have two SO two plus O two is in equilibrium with two SO three. All three of them are gases present in one liter vessel at six hundred degrees Celsius. Contains this, this, and this moles of SO two O two and SO three respectively. We need to calculate Kc. Okay, so this is a pretty simple uh, question, pretty simple concept. So point five, point one two, and five. Okay, that is the number we need to take away. So we have. Point five, point one two, and five. I'm just going to quickly verify if we are talking about it. Okay, correct. So, however, they said that was the number of moles. Volume is given to us as one liter, so I can directly say that concentration is nothing but number of moles by volume. So, this will directly become so many mole per liter, right? Or molar, right? So many molar. So, concentration is also the same, correct? now what do we need to do we need to write down the expression for kc okay so we have these equilibrium concentrations so what will kc become kc will become concentration of so3 squared divided by concentration of so2 squared into concentration of o2 correct so this will become 5 into 5 divided by uh, 0.5 squared into 0.12 okay so this is Not too difficult. Twenty five into hundred into hundred divided by twenty five into twelve. That is what I am getting. So this and this will get cancelled. Now, what is one by twelve? One by twelve is approximately equal to point zero eight three three. So what do we get? We get point zero eight into ten to the power of four. That is going to be the answer, right? So what do we get? We get point zero eight into ten to the power of four molar. right so you can simplify it you can see that only option c is the one that's matching so option c is going to become the right answer to this question